Good morning. Uh, this is my first trip to the, uh, the Keys for a potential hurricane. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to take a few moments to update you on Hurricane Matthew. First, Hurricane Matthew is a Category 4, four storm and is deadly. We cannot take this storm lightly. Let me say that again. Hurricane Matthew is a Category 4 storm and we cannot take it lightly. It is absolutely deadly. It's approaching Florida with potentially devastating winds. Every forecast continues to put Florida more in harm's way. If Matthew directly impacts Florida, there will be massive destruction that we haven't seen in years. As a Category 4 hurricane, Matthew is life-threatening with winds of 145 miles per hour and significant amounts of rain as it travels across the Caribbean. Yesterday, issued an executive order declaring a state of emergency for every Florida county due to the severity and magnitude of the storm. Every county has been included in this order to ensure we have the resources for evacuations, sheltering, and other logistical needs. We are preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, and we're not going to take any chances. Here's what we know right now about the storm. Hurricane Matthew is making landfall now in Haiti and Cuba. Matthew is expected to hit the Bahamas late tonight or early tomorrow morning. It has already killed multiple people. It has already killed multiple people. We all need to take this storm seriously. As this storm bears down on these nations, we must pray for every family in harm's way. Matthew is a very slow-moving storm and is continuing to move north to northwest. At this time, the track of the storm is moving more west toward Florida. We have continued to see more of a shift toward Florida over the past few days. Direct hurricane impacts are possible on Florida. We cannot rule out a direct hit. Again, we cannot rule out a direct hit on Florida. Right now, we expect to see impacts all the way along Florida's east coast, from the Keys all the way up through uh, Jacksonville. We are very focused on the I-95 corridor. We can expect to see impacts on, Florida's, on Florida beginning Wednesday and going through the weekend. Again, everyone needs to take this storm seriously. Impacts of Hurricane Man uh, Matthew could be heavy rain, rip currents, beach erosion, tornadoes, and hurricane force winds. Even if the storm remains offshore, tropical storm force winds will extend into our state. As of now, wind strength is our biggest concern regard regardless if the storm has a direct impact or not. The possibility of high wind speeds has continued to increase as the forecast develops. But again, as this this could quickly change and become much worse. Just remember, whatever you're seeing from the National Hurricane Center is, a, is their expect, expectation now that things change all the time. They're all projections, and we must prepare for the worst. In my conversation with the National Hurricane Center, I've been advised that hurricane watches and warnings may be issued later today. Evacuations may be also be issued starting today. If an evacuation order is issued, in your area, leave immediately. During Hurricane Ermine, there was, a, there was a lady that stayed in her house because she had four pets. She waited until the water was one half feet deep. She almost perished. Thank goodness when she left, there was a vehicle outside that could take her to safety. That might not happen for you. Once the storm comes, we cannot put our responder, first responders in harm's way. You must leave before it's too late. You can rebuild a home. You can rebuild a business. You cannot rebuild a life. Follow the directions of your local officials. This is serious, and your safety depends on you being prepared and staying alert to all warnings and orders. Make sure to watch your local news and stay tuned to the weather forecast. If you're on Florida's east coast, you should know where you will go if you have to evacuate. Know your plan now. Don't wait. If you're able to leave early and go today, you should do that before traffic builds up. No one should take any risk. We have no we have projections of where the storm's going. We don't know exactly where the storm's going. Storms change. I'm staying in constant contact with the National Hurricane Center and emergency management officials in all 67 counties to make sure every local community has all the resources they need to be prepared. Our National Guard stands ready to be deployed if necessary. With any storm like this, we always have the risk of losing power. Everyone should prepare for the loss of power. I've been in contact with the utilities across the state and will stay in communication with them. Many of them have already told me that they have pre-positioned resources so they can respond quickly. I've been in contact with the Florida Highway Patrol and the Florida Department of Transportation to make sure they're ready to go if people have to evacuate. I urge you to visit floridadisaster.org. 
Here you can visit your, see where your closest shelter is, as well as information on road closures. It's very important that you know where the shelters are in case you'll need to evacuate. Now is the, not, now is the time to know your evacuation plan. Please check the website or with your local officials. This can save your life. We'd like to start to see impacts on our state within 48 hours. Having a plan in place could mean the difference between life and death when it comes to a storm of this magnitude. Now is the time to check on your neighbors and make sure they have a plan. If you have any special needs, if you have any elderly, any neighbor you think that might need additional services, go check on them now and see if you can be helpful to them. We all have to work together to make sure we make it through this possibility of a catastrophic storm. Make sure to have at least three days of food, food three days of water, have medication and battery powered radio, backup batteries, a fully charged cell phone. If we lose power, you cannot recharge your cell phone. It might be your only way to communicate. It might be your only way to get information. Keep your cell phone charged. Again, if Matthew directly impacts Florida, the destruction could be catastrophic, and it could be deadly, and you have to be prepared. Regardless of the direct impact, we can expect Matthew to bring heavy rain to coastal communities. It is incredibly important that everyone does their part to combat Zika. You do that by getting rid of standing water. Any amount of standing water can serve as a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Everyone should dump the standing water around their homes and businesses. Encourage your friends and neighbors to do the same thing. Remember to wear long sleeves and wear bug repellent when you're outdoors. Combating this virus is something we must do together to protect our pregnant women and their developing babies. We are preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, and we're not going to take any chances. Florida knows how to prepare, but everyone has got to take this seriously and have a plan. Do not take any chances and do not wait. Be ready now. Again, if you think you're going to have to evacuate, go do it now before the roads get clogged. We'll do everything we can to keep all the highways moving, the turnpike moving, do everything we can. But if you think you're going to need to evacuate, do it today. We will continue to provide, provide updates on this life-threatening storm if it develop, as it develops and approaches our state. Thank you, and I'll answer any questions anybody has. Do you think, uh, we haven't had a major storm here, I've been saying South Florida quite some time, so Long many time. years. Um, Anywhere in the state, really. Yeah, really, I mean, I've, I've, I've ten years. that fun earlier this, this year. Yeah. How complacent do you think people are? Especially, this is sort of like an 11th hour, like, hey, it's in our way. So on top of that, so many people moved here. I mean, think how many people have never been through one. Uh, they, they think they can hunker down. Uh, you don't, you can't. I mean, you need to listen to local officials. If there's an evacuation order, you, ha you have to do it. You, uh, you need to have three days of food, three days of water. Make sure you have your medicine. But keep your cell phone charged. If you lose power, we lost power in uh, uh, Hurricane Ermine for, some people lost power for almost a week up in Tallahassee. And that was not even on the, on the coast. So you could, you could lose your, um, your power for a week. And so you're not going to be able to recharge your cell phone. So keep your cell phone charged now, because it might be the only way you're going to get information. Um, and then real quick, you know, no one else has any questions. Uh, what do we, I mean, you're talking about maybe they're going to be evacuated. <coughs> what can we see here in the Florida Keys, and what can we see in South Florida in the next 12, 24 hours as far as evacuating people and and get them out of here because obviously a lot of people in South Florida have to move in. How smart is it to evacuate people? Is hunkering down actually maybe the better way in, in sheltering in place where you can because well, there seems to be... Right now if you think there's a chance you're going to have to evacuate, you ought to go and go. I mean you ought to get, you know, get away from the impacted areas. That's the smartest thing to do. But we're going to, you know, in, in our meeting here, we're already looking at, we're constantly looking at it. Everybody's looking at it locally. We're doing this all across the state, county by county by county, to make the best decision in following this storm. The problem we have with this storm is that it's, it's the, the projected path is right along our coast, and if it turns, we're not going to have a lot of time to make a decision. And so we're, you know, we're gonna, and the best thing is to be prepared and not take any chances. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.